Hello, welcome to the Wapco World Web Event. Nice that you are here. My name is Ralf Niklaus. I'm trainer at Wapco World, and I have a colleague with me. He may introduce himself. Yes, thank you, Ralf. I'm responsible in the key account management at Wapco World, taking care of the strategic customer around in Europe. And um, I will guide you through the webinar together with Ralf. And um, yeah, we will face the trailer connection today with our diagnose and um, please show us your equipment. <laughs> I will not show all of them. I would like to start with our smart case for the trailer customers. That should be quite enough, I think so. In there, we have space for the VCI for the ISO 7638 adapter and a little bit space for some additional equipment. On the top place, there is space for some specific trailer cables, which I would not specify directly now. That's a topic which the sales rep could define with the customer individual. What is his need? As we don't have, uh, let's call it sets, which you must buy, each box which you can buy from Wapco World is individual set it up on the demands of the specific customer. Exactly. So every customer can individualize his setup and paying only for what he really needs based on the fleet that he has to maintain. Okay. Okay. We prepared a little bit. That's the reason why the box is empty. We have prepared here our trailer power device. In this case, it's used only to power up the modulator to be able to make a diagnosis. The capability of this device is much bigger. It's a diagnostic system for trailers. In that case, diagnosis not of the ECU, but of the lights which are built in on the trailers able to make the diagnosis on standard illumination as well as on LED lights. So also for the additional pins for lift axle, for um, the, the orange emergency light or other functions which you can find on the trailer. It's not topic of today. We, we use it to power up via the EBS cable with the ESO 7638 adapter, it's connected with the VCI. We switched already ignition on, so it means the white light is on on the box and it's powered. We have it connected to um, Knorr modulator. That's the hardware setup which is simple as on a semi-trailer, for example, we have the same connection here. Now we will go to the software. Yes, um, I will open up the software now. So <coughs> just imagine we have a nice and fancy trailer here with a Knorr modulator underneath, or at least we have a trailer. So first thing we need to do is to identify what kind of modulator we have. And um, <coughs> In this case, I have different possibilities to go around, check around what, uh, yeah, is there a, a little plate around the trailer that gives me an identification if it's a Wapco system, if it's a Knorr system or a Haldex system. Um, if I do not find such a possibility, I have um, the option to go into the software to search for the manufacturer on the drop down, Haldex, Knorr, or uh, even Wapco and further on with the model, or I just go into my power search and type in what, in this case, we have. Important to know here, for the people who are not specialists, you will not find outside a manufacturer of trailer called Wapco or Knorr or Haldex. We are talking about the breaking ECU or the main ECU in the system. So the manufacturer could be, for example, Schmitz Cargo Bull. Exactly. But underneath, you will find, defined from the uh, customer, which type of brakes he would like to have. And that's the important brand for us, which brake system is built in, so we can define the proper diagnosis way. 
Exactly. And if you still have a problem that the trailer is in front of you and you don't know, okay, what does it might be now, um, you have the ECU identification help where you can jump in mm -hmm. and you can easily see pictures of possible modulators that are underneath your trailer. So now take your laptop with the screen opened up and check out what or how does the modulator look like that you found at the trailer. So we can go and scroll down now. These pictures are implemented in all three brands. So all known modulators, you will find a picture in here. So even if you select right now Haldex, for example, you will find as well in the pictures the, 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 the Knorr, the Haldex, and the Vacuum modulators. So in the first step is not so important which manufacturer you select. Finally, you can correct it before you start with the diagnosis. Exactly. In our case, our modulator over in this uh, little box um, is a TAPS G2. And <clears throat> the TAPS G2 is the system that we are going on to now. So I search via systems over to the TAPS G2. And um, I have different possibilities now to go for an OBD diagnose, for test values, for wiregram. Uh, for wiring diagram um, and in this case I just want to get access to my modulator mm -hmm. I turn on the OBD diagnose and the system is now trying to get in touch with our modulator <clears throat> the color is changing of our diagnose box and um, the system is now running and while the system is running you see over the uh, the power the voltmeter um, that gives us an indication of the uh, energy supply that we have on our trailer modulator. Um, and in this case, we are fine. We have enough power to do um, a diagnose without receiving phantom fault codes. Yep. Because if you reach a certain amount of energy, um, it's not possible to do a, a serious diagnose anymore because you will get phantom failures. You will see it indicated by the color of the battery logo. You see on the upper right corner now it's green, so everything is fine. Exactly. Afterwards, it will change to orange and then to red. And if it goes down more, even the box will change its color to a flashing red and playing an annoying noise. So you are uh, aware something is going wrong here. You are under low power. Exactly. <clears throat> <clears throat> so now I, I want to know what's going on with my modulator. So I open up the fault codes, the fault memory. And um, the system is now trying to identify the faults that we have on our modulator. Um, there we go. We see already um, a significant amount of fault codes here. Um, the fault code numbers are the original fault codes from um, the manufacturer of the modulator. So uh, with this information, if you cannot, uh, if you, you don't, do not get help from our system with the fault code, with the original fault code, you have the possibility to contact the manufacturer, to contact a workshop nearby that is dealing with it, or you ask the great internet if there are any answers for you. And um, so you have the possibility to get a serious help with the original fault code. Okay, um, I will just open up one sensor, uh, one one of the faults that we have here, and you uh, get additional information. In this case, since we are on a WAP, uh, on a Knorr modulator, we um, do not have the freeze frame available. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, but we will go on to the freeze frame uh, later when we work with the WAPCO modulator um, and see what kind of information we have here. So you see here as well uh, the smart guide that helps you now to identify the issue of this fault code. Um, when I click on it, you have a variety of fault uh, possibilities, a frequency. So this might be the failure. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we talk about 50% uh, possibility that the wheel speed sensor is the problem. Yep. Um, otherwise, uh, we have two, two other options the wheel speed or the EBS control unit. Um, nevertheless, those are um, yeah, hints basically for, for the fault search, but um, 
and there might be additional faults, uh, uh, reason for the fault available. Just, just imagine, <clears throat> indicated is the wheel speed sensor. It could be the sensor itself. It could be the connection between the cable and the sensor, or it could be the cable. This will be indicated as the wheel speed sensor in general. So don't forget to check the wiring as well. It's not indicated separately, but it could be a possibility of the failure. Exactly. Good. Um, so here you have the possibility above with a little red eye that you can click onto and you see a drop down opens up and you have here different uh, support. You have the help file, you have the manual, you have a test procedure, test values, <coughs> the wiring diagram um, where you can go on to. You click onto a, wire, a wiring diagram, for example, um, we take the generation two and um, we get a different possibility here. What kind of type we have, configurations. We take the first one and as soon as the first configurations open up, you see already the, the wiring map. Um, my mouse cursor was now already onto an ECU. So as you can see here, the picture pops up and you can identify here also uh, of what kind of ECU we speak about. Um, the um, a different possibility to search is via the drop down fu function over here, where you can see now okay, is it the wheel speed sensor, is it the TEPS ECU, or what kind of yeah, ECU you're looking for. We go into the wheel speed sensor, and as you can see here, with a nice red marked box now, it shows me where exactly the wheel speed sensor is based. And additionally, if you um, have it on your map here, you can check also out our lock picture, location picture, and you see where the wheel speed sensor is placed in the wheel or at the wheel. That's the place I think where I would like to search for it. Exactly. <laughs> but nevertheless, this little picture is a nice indication. It helps you. Um, <coughs> additionally, you have an information of how it looks like. Yeah, so here you can have a look how this wheel speed sensor looks like, um, as well as the location down. So a nice, pretty simple and effective pictogram yeah. that helps you in your daily job. Depending on the sensor which you are searching for or looking for, um, you will receive more or less additional information. On some sensors, we put uh, measuring values for uh, as a reference. So if you take your multimeter or your um, oscilloscope, you can make the measurement directly there and have the reference from our system. Yeah. Do you want to mention the numbers here as well? Yeah, okay. The CB1, in that case, um, it's a part number or um, a description of the part. If you erase the first letter, it lets you only B1. And B1 is the exact same naming as you will find in the Knorr Bremse documentation as well, or every other naming. So we just put in addition a C in front, and the rest of the name is exactly the same as you will find in the OE plans as well. Good. Good. So now we have shown you a bit of our Knorr break. Anything Knorr break. Else? multi-brand diagnosis exactly so next step i would say as we are good here the next what we would like to do or what i would one like thing to do. Uh, we forgot is to save the protocol Could that's we something we should uh, do yeah. as well just as a quick information um, press the disk <coughs> button and you can save your protocol so that you um, have saved now your the actual diagnose status the status of the, of the yeah. exactly the status of the trailer. So in this case, we have here a wonderful license plate that we type in the vehicle identification number. The modulator is programmed on Hello 2. The mileage is shown, um, and we can select the mechanic that did the job. In this case, it's my beloved colleague Ralph that we put in here. We save it and the protocol is noticed and stored on our device. Yep. The protocol is available via PDF and can be printed out and sent to the customer as well if necessary. 
um, so that everything is documented fine on our device. Perfect. Okay, so I suggest I switch over to the Wapco. Nope. To the, to the hard X, X to the hard yes. X one, please first. And uh, you go over with our diagnose. Can you have a So I'm erasing everything what we have done. So I'm back in the start mode. Typing in there HAL, so it's short enough to receive me the Haldex selection. Now I'm in the Haldex trailer. Going there into systems, EBS brake system, OBD diagnosis, test values, wiring diagram and components is available, all about Haldex in that case. I start the OBD diagnosis, Haldex Diac Plus, that's the OE diagnosis. So here we have a different topic towards the solution we have with the Knorr Bremse. That's our own made uh, diagnosis. In that case here, we have the OE diagnosis. So the colleague is still preparing, but nevertheless. Um, Thank you. Now the system should ask me something. I hope so. Hold on, I just turned the ignition on. So here we see activation of expert mode is required. Why do we have such a solution in here? The problem is on the multi-brand we have seen to read out the fault codes delete them, everything is easy going. What you have not seen, to copy the data set towards a new modulator, which is more or less daily work on a workshop on trailers. One modulator is broken, you have to replace it with another one. On that point, we demand our super pin because that's a, a safety function. On the Haldex Diac Plus system, um, we demand this super pin already before we open the software because Haldex decided not to implement a pin code security function in their own software. So, so you have to basically in. book a training um, and yep. you get uh, verified by Haldex internally and after a certain amount of time uh, you have or you have a certain amount of time available to do the training and um, then you can work in an open version with the Haldex software. Uh, I hope I have the right pin here. We will see if it works. So Ralph is now typing in the super pin and um, in, you can note down the super pin, it's not a problem. It, it only will works, not work. Exactly. It will only work with our device. So your super pin or the super pin that you uh, receive when you choose our solution is uh, connected to the WC box and connected to the device so that we have a security system around that we ensure that no one can fool around with a different super pin. So if your employee leaves the workshop, for example, and work with a different workshop with the same software, he cannot use the super pin. Yep, right. So here, they are, the software asked me on which way do I have the connection to the system. On the right side, you see the connectors which you can use to connect via the side socket or to connect directly into the modulator, depending which model you are using. But we have the easy way going on the left side using just the ISO adapter. So I make a click on that one and the system starts to check out which modulator is in there, which protocol is needed and will the open is, the uh, software. The box is showing us with the different colors signalizing that it's getting access to the modulator. Yep. Green is the color of getting access to the modulator. And as you can see also in our software, it's moving. 
So we're proceeding now with an overview of our trailer. You see basically the map of the trailer with the air pressure. Exactly. So you have in one view at a glance an overview over the status of the trailer. Um, I will not go into deep of the software itself. Therefore, there is a training available from Haldex. Exactly. So in there, you will receive the proper technical background information you need. For us, in the first step, I think it's the topic to take a look on the fault codes. So that means I click on to service. Important for us is to show you that we work with the original diagnose. And the original diagnose prevents you also for any claims towards other parties. Yeah, you work with the original diagnose and you can service the trailer on the original <laughs> software. And yep. this is important. So every service that you do is uh, basically originally done with the Haldex exactly. software. Exactly. So what you see here is uh, fault code one of existing five. You have here the freeze frame data, which other uh, topics have been enlightened or not. The important button for myself for repair is the I button. So the explanation of the fault code which you are looking. You see here for that one fault code, you have a large explanation explaining you why it pops up and how to repair it. And this information comes from OE manufacturer, not from us. So if he don't knows it, who the hell should know it? Exactly. And the good thing on the, the Alex software is also that you can go into the deep of yeah. the trailer and you have all the possibilities to play around yeah, as long as you know what you are doing. Um, so you can parameterize, you can calibrate, everything um, can be done with the software. Yep, you're right. Absolutely, including reprogramming, adding some parameters. Yes. You have full access to the whole ECU. Shall As I told, we switch over to our Wapco trailer? Exactly, that's what I would like to say. I will not go much into the deep, therefore there's an extra um, training available. Yep. I think you have seen the difference between multi-brand and OE in that case. So I also disconnect the system from the software. So we can basically start with a diagnose. Would you like or should I? Just go through with computer standing on your side. All I right. Give my Systems, <laughs> brakes. In that case, we have the tabs E. You see here also manual diagnosis, wiring diagram. Um, in that case, I start real quick with the manual towards this modulator. And as you see, even the documentation you will find inside of the software is the original VACO documentation. Is nothing self-written or however, I scroll down a little bit faster so you have maybe a better view if I find it. You, you have here the exact explanation of each single topic of the modulator of the capability and explained it by detail. <coughs> okay, I'm quiet. I go to the So Ralph will now switch over into the into the Wapco diagnose. And you can see here already that our uh, yeah our frame will change a little bit the look like compared to the Haldex or compared to our multi-brand that we had with the Knorr modulator. We are now working with the original Wapco um, surface, and um, yeah, some of them are probably uh, uh, some of some of you. This this surface is probably familiar. Ralph is now choosing the direction we are linked onto the modulator, and as soon as we have chosen that, that is a little bit different compared to the original Wapco. So to those who are familiar with the original Wapco, um, with our device, please. Tell the system how you are connected onto the modulator, which way. There are various possibilities to connect. On the Wapco original cable, for example, they don't have a tube like we have with only one wire coming out. 
they have a, let's call it a path through. And on each connector, they have a diagnostic socket. So you choose by connecting manually in which direction you would like to make the diagnosis. On our system, we select the direction of the diagnosis yes. via the multiplexer inside of the VCI and with the electronics inside of the ISO adapter to define. Could in which you direction. open once more up the, the, the combination of the. Because there you can see also that you have different possibilities to link via the, uh, the side socket of the modulator. So the way we are going through now is through the central head of the trailer, basically, with our ISO adapter. But you have also the possibility to uh, get access to the modulator via the side socket. Yep. And this is then also the way that you have to tell the software which way you're going through. I just click it, so we will redo it. Different combination possibilities, if it's yes. connected with ECAS, without ECAS, it's a VCS1, it's a TEPS-E. Depending on which system you're connected, you just click on the proper image with the proper description yes. and you get the connection. And also here shown in, in our other webinars, um, if you have still some older cables available um, from your former system, Wapco system, you have the possibility to keep on using them with a special adapter cable yeah. in our range. So there's no need to buy each cable new. You can use your existing devices just with a little adapter to our box, and it works. Exactly. So Also interesting information for the Wapco software now. Um, Ralph will now get access to it. We will see how the modulator is responding to us. Um, in the further process, the deeper you get in the software, the software wants a pinning from you as well. And those are the special Wapco pins. And these special Wapco pins um, are, are pins that you receive personally during due to training at the Wapco Academy. Those pins can be used further on. And I think this is important to say that you do not have to do an additional trainings or new trainings to receive the pin. It is that you can keep your pinning. Right. Well, that, that's the big difference from the manufacturer side between all the different brands. Yes. The Wapco pins are binded by a specific person. So, for example, I work for workshop A, have my training, have my own pins. I'm the owner of the pins, not the company. In that case, if I leave the company and move to another company, then I will take the pins with me because I'm personally registered trained, towards yeah. Wapco where I'm <laughs> working. Um, just another side information, as I see uh, the colleagues in the back are typing like hell. If you have any further questions, just use the chat. Um, we will stay online with our specialists still a while after the webinar, so we are not visual, you cannot hear us, but the chat is still in function. Don't hesitate, just ask if you have any question. Okay. So I hope I didn't forget something no. here as well. I will not go into the deep of the OE software as there are trainings available from OE. Exactly. They Important from that. our side was to show you that you work with the original software, that you have access in the yeah, familiar overview of, of the software itself. Yep. And yeah, that's what we wanted to show you. And we hope that it gave you a nice impression. And yeah. Hope to see or hear you soon. Yeah, hope so too. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the weekend. Bye.